Welcome back, everybody, from your break. Uh, we have three more presentations uh, this, uh, for this seminar, and I'm very pleased to introduce our first presenter, uh, Lindsay Olson. Uh, it says on the slide in front of you that she is artist in residence, but my goodness, where, uh, where is she artist in residence? She's re artist in residence at Chicago's Stickney Water Re Reclamation Plant, which uh, claims to be the largest wastewater plant in the world. Um, I know it's really big. Uh, it was built a long time ago. But uh, rarely do you hear of an artist being uh, uh, given the title of artist in residence to a wastewater plant. Uh, Lindsay has really intrigued me ever, ever since I came across her. Uh, besides being uh, the artist in residence, she's indeed a visual artist and she's a teacher at Columbia College in Chicago. And uh, she has some pretty amazing stuff to show you. Uh, that uh, really gets into uh, how uh, she wants to raise awareness about wastewater through art. Lindsay, please go ahead. Um, thanks, Mark, and thank you, Dendra, for inviting me. I'm very, very pleased to be here today. Last month, I hosted a Twitter conference, and I can't tell you how happy I am to not be limited to that few characters in speaking. Um, most of the time, when I talk to people about this project, Manufactured River, what most people really want to know is, why did I choose wastewater treatment as the subject for art? Why did I trade in painting for uh, a place like this, which is where I used to do my waterscape paintings. This is the Des Plaines River that's very near to my house. I traded in this working environment for this working environment. You can see right here my uh, sketchboard is set up and my stool. This is the pump house at Stickney. Um, and working with wastewater treatment is really an extension of my interest in waterscapes and water management. Manufactured River has really grown out of my curiosity about the real story about water. Um, early in the 2000s, I was painting impressionistic waterscapes. And what I was doing was focusing mainly on the idealized picture of waterscapes. And I would oftentimes edit out a lot of the man-made stuff in the environment. And uh, this, that, the, this slide was, uh, again, the Des Plaines River near my house. I walk this trail maybe four times a week. It's just one of my favorite places to be. This is um, a spot in uh, northern Illinois. It's just a few hours north of Chicago. I hang out here a lot, too. But one day, my husband and I were canoeing on the Chicago River. And we love to canoe all over the place. And we ran into this uh, SEPA station. And what the SEPA station is designed to do is add aeration to this sluggish Chicago Canal. And finding out about this whole process of who built the SEPA station, why was it built, led me to my local wastewater treatment facility. And I really had no idea that one little question would lead me to such a huge um, scientific and technical adventure that would lead me into working with a completely different media than I had worked with before. Um, and I really, really enjoyed talking to people and learning about the stories um, that are around the technologies and the sort of heroic activities that operators do during flood events and all the information that scientists and engineers and operators know to keep us healthy. Um, however diverse life is on our planet, most of us really never stop to appreciate the biological diversity in our guts. We've evolved with microbes and have an interdependent relationship with them. Dr. Snow's discovery of the connection between drinking water, our waste, and microbial activity launched a sanitary revolution, and this revolution has saved more lives than any other public health initiative. After learning these facts and realizing that all of us depend on the services of many technical experts every day, I began to think about the project in a visual way. I started sketching my ideas. Combining art and wastewater treatment is both a visual and an intellectual challenge. Working in this particular way with a large technical industry requires focus, endurance, and a ferocious curiosity. I wanted to portray the real story of water. And if I did that, I really had to roll up my sleeves and do my homework. Because to tell you the truth, I really tried to just get by with all my science and math classes in school. Being an artist, I was much more focused on other things. So as a result, 
Um, I attend a lot of seminars at the district. Um, I read a lot of books. I talk to a lot of people, and I'm really trying to blend um, my art and the science to express the spirit of the industry. It's really important to me that the science is reflected in that. Our waste is a paradox. It can both contaminate and it can cultivate. And that's where the work of scientists and engineers and operators in the wastewater treatment business come in. On my first trip to this uh, plant at Stickney, I was introduced to several microbiologists who explained that engineers and scientists and operators have duplicated the process that nature uses to clean water. Um, I was really blown away by the beauty of the microbes that I was seeing under the microscope. And I was even more amazed to discover that all of these beautiful microbes arrive at the plant from our guts. The plant personnel nurture the microbes, giving them an optimum environment in which to thrive, so that what takes days in nature is condensed into hours. In the aeration tank, a, a Shakespearean drama unfolds as armies of microbes live, die, and buy for dominance in the activated sludge process. The cleaning process begins with the smallest microbes who do the biggest job of uh, cleaning the water, and that's the bacteria. Early in the process, the bacteria are in a huge race to eat, multiply, and reproduce. And as the process uses up available oxygen and food, which is our waste, um, they form chains to conserve energy. So you can see here's this one, Veggie Atola. Um, this bacteria forms up a chain in a low oxygen environment. And it's one of the ones that can survive well in a low oxygen environment because it strips out the oxygen from a sulfur dioxide molecule. So what's left after it uses up the oxygen are these sparkly little sulfur particles. These are so beautiful. They look kind of like Tinkerbell. Um, so after the bacteria does its job, um, the protozoa are next. And so this is a stock ciliate. This is Carchesium. Um, they start cleaning up after the bacteria, and they start eating the dead bacteria and the bacteria's waste and so forth. And finally, at the end of the process, it's the metazoans that finish up uh, the cleaning process of the water before it moves off to a different stage. Getting down to the business of making art, I had to combine what I was learning in the industry with my skills as an artist. Many artists use oil paint, watercolors, or other traditional media. But when I work, I want the media to reinforce the message in the art. The materials that I use for each project are as much a part of the work as the subject matter. Um, they support the subject. They magnify the issue. But more importantly for me, the selection of materials allows me to have a sympathetic relationship with my subject. I felt that textiles would be the most suitable media for this body of work. Water, after all, is a very personal media. And fabric is also, or, or water is something we ingest in a personal way. And fabric is something that we use intimately every day. In a wastewater treatment plant, scientists, engineers, and operators, and tradespeople work side by side. So I wanted my materials to reflect this diversity. The textiles that I use are both substantial and ethereal, expensive and common. And the art is mounted on a workmanlike canvas and collaged with dress shirts, table linens, silk, wool, and denim. I want the work to show that real people like you and me make this their life's work and are dedicated to serving the public. I use a lot of hand processes, slow ones, um, like embroidery or piecing or beading. Um, and some of my pieces take many, many hours in their creation. This sort of surface embellishment has historically been reserved for royalty and the wealthy. By using these labor-intensive techniques to express my visual ideas, I am reinforcing the underlying message that the subject of treated wastewater and the people whose job it is to clean our wastewater is valuable. Mounting the richly embellished surface on canvas is another way to show that the subject is ultimately about a workmanlike ethic. The canvas is a heavy-duty fabric. And it's usually reserved for clothing that laborers use. It's tough and it's durable. Learning about, uh, learning for me is about drawing. And if I could have drawn in my science classes, I would have done a much better job learning about it. Um, so this is a page from my sketchbook. 
And what I'm doing is learning about the shape of the cell. You know, whether or not there's a connecting sleeve around the bacterial chains. What these branches look like that form up as the bacteria form these clumps. Um, so really, um, I wanted to express the microbes in such a way so that when the microbiologists looked at the pieces, they would be able to recognize the species, which in fact they did. So I was really gratified. I was so nervous to show the microbiologists my, my pieces. After I had spent you know, a few months in the seclusion of my studio, I brought them out. And one by one, they looked at all the pieces and said, oh, yes, that's you know, Cartesian, that's Bordicella, that's bacteria type 914. Look at the sparkles. So here you can see that um, the chains are formed up. This particular species of bacteria has very square cells. There's no sheath on the outside, but you can also see that this um, bacteria species, like the other one, Vegetoa, also takes up um, sulfur dioxide from uh, the low oxygen environment, strips the oxygen out, and has these sparkly little um, pieces of sulfur left in it. It's quite an easily identified characteristic. Um, this is Mastoquita limicola 2, not 1, not 3. Those species look very, very different. These um, look like pop beads on a, a child's toy jewelry. This is one of the crawling ciliates, Aspidisca. Um, the materials that I'm using here are linen. You can kind of see a hint of the raw linen here. This lighter material is silk charmeuse, so it has a shine. It's a very expensive material. This is some wool in the background, and the very dark border here is denim. This is Vorticella, one of the stalked ciliates. This is one of the kind of stalked ciliates that behaves independently. So if something ruffles the, the feathers of this animal, it will boing down like this. So they all, they all behave independently. And it sucks in food through the cilia at the opening of the mouth. These are whirling and whirling and whirling around in a circle, sucking the nutrient, sucking the, you know, the wastewater in. They, you know, eat their food and I just thought they were really, really pretty under the microscope. This one is called amoeba feeds, and it's an amoeba feeding on a paramecium. And I saw a YouTube video where this very slow-moving amoeba is going about its business while the frenetic paramecium is just going, bumping up into the amoeba and doing its business at about 60 miles an hour. And very slowly, the amoeba sort of stalks the paramecium until all of a sudden it's completely surrounded, can't escape, and it's become dinner. So this is what I mean by the drama in the tank. There's all this, you know, feeding and breeding and excreting. It's pretty amazing. Um, so you saw a picture of the pump house earlier in the presentation. And the first impression I had in the pump house was that it was pretty overwhelming. I really had never ever worked in a place where I needed to wear a hard hat and ear protection because it's pretty loud in there with all the pumps. Um, and the sheer amount of visual information just overwhelmed me. Um, I felt a little bit intimidated about the environment. So what I did was I just found one place, sat down, and started drawing. And what I eventually learned over a series of months of drawing in the pump house was that the pipes have a particular color language. So for instance, the yellow pipes are for effluent, the blue is for city water, silver is for air, and brown is for slush. This piece is called Poseidon Siblings, and in it I'm evoking waves and waves of water using the language of high fashion. The shape of the whole piece is meant to mirror the shape of the aeration tank. Um, through the use of extravagant ruffles with a sturdy industrial textile, I'm building a contrast between this sort of industrial heavy-duty treatment process and Poseidon's power. You can see his trident spearing the waves in a powerful gesture. In linking the myth of Poseidon, protector of water, with the people whose job it is to clean our wastewater, I'm disrupting a cultural perception that wastewater is something to flush and forget. I want to portray all of you who are working in the wastewater industry as the true environmental heroes that you are. Uh, Dendra, how am I doing on time? You're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. About five more okay. minutes. OK, thanks. OK, so this is um, one of the soil sentinels. I will eventually have three of these soil sentinels. 
Um, this was the work that grew, this piece grew out of my work with the biosolids um, part of the project. And biosolids are what's left over after the waste, the treated wastewater is siphoned off and returned back to the, um, the hyd hydrological system of the area. The solids that are collected and um, after this process is, are over are, um, they go through this intense process where they're cooked and then they have to like hang out for 18 months for a while. And um, I wanted to honor this particular part of the process because for me, it was such a powerful metaphor to think about returning, you know, when we, when we farm our lands, we pull nutrients out of the soil. And if we are smart, we will take our treated biosolids and put them back into the farmland to, to complete the cycle of life, just like we would do with horse manure, except there's this whole big um, kind of cultural antagonism towards using our own waste in that way. But it's really become very safe and there used to be an issue with heavy metals and biosolids and that's pretty much been completely cleared up. So they're really quite valuable. So um, I may, I'm, I'm pushing myself to make three of these soil sentinels because three is a number that has been traditionally linked to spiritual kinds of images. I'm also using copper and expensive materials, silk and embroidery. Um, and I'm using them in a way that's, you know, kind of, like I said before, traditionally reserved for nobility. Blue is one of the themes that runs through almost all my pieces. And that is that wastewater is at its heart water. So the blue is my kind of touchstone in each of the pieces. I'm trying to express in this piece that there's layers of soil, that there's powerful processes in creating soil and for us to nurture it, you know, the sentinel whole idea is about nurturing it. Um, let's see. We talked about the biosolids having an image problem. Okay, and now I'm working on pieces that are related to the valves. I don't know why, but, you know, artists have these funny things where you get attached to a certain, a particular idea or a particular image. And for me, the valves have uh, are, are a really great metaphor for controlling the flow of water, like human beings have had to do to survive in a city. Um, but the pieces that are growing out of this are, this is um, a work in progress. It's not even finished. But this took me about 30 or 40 hours just to do a small piece here. I'm going to add sequins to this piece. And, and it's going to be very dense surface embellishment. And I think what I'm going to do with these valve pieces is tie them to our guts in a visual way so that the valves are a metaphor for the digestive process and a connection to the wastewater treatment process. But these are kind of, um, this is ongoing, so I'm not exactly sure where this one is going, but I just thought I'd share it with you. Um, I felt as a culture that um, we're ignoring a whole segment of fresh water just because it's the stuff we flush down the toilet. Um, so I, I want to use the artwork to raise people's awareness about sanitation and its value to our, our culture and its value to our public health. And most of us forget about it. Um, so I want the public to celebrate the miracle of public health and the quiet heroes working in this industry. So if anybody has any ideas for how I can get the project out into uh, a local gallery or a local uh, museum or for an event, I would really appreciate hearing from people. So again, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share the artwork. And I'm really learning a lot listening into everybody's presentations. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Lindsay. I really appreciate your presentation, and I admire so much your beautiful art. Uh, you. You're welcome. Thank and you. Definitely, I see applause. I can't. I can't hear applause, but I can see applause. <laughs> very good. <laughs> well, uh, any questions for Lindsay at this point? Uh, Gary Lynch, you have a question. Uh, what happened to you? There you are. Did you have a question, Gary? Uh, okay. Several comments. Thanks. A refreshing view of our daily work. Stephen Maines, this is fantastic. This needs to be a national traveling show to oh. local museums and wastewater plants. What do you think, Lindsay? Oh, God, I'd love it. I would love it. <laughs> thank very you for good. your feedback. Any other comments or questions? Those are very good. I, I guess my, I just want to add that. I have to admit, when I heard the uh, topic, I was a little skeptical, 
the, the first slides that Lindsay sent, it's your jaw drops. They are so stunningly beautiful. They just are. Thank you. Thank you, Dendra. It was intentional and in trying to use all of my skills as an artist to make this industry look really great. <laughs> and we appreciate it. Oh, anybody, anybody who can make biosolids or sludge to the rest of the world look great is a, a truly a wonderful artist. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are ready to move on to our next presenter.